Okay, good morning and welcome back everyone to our Tuesday morning market outlook session. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And today we're going to take a look at the broader markets and what is moving currently as of this morning. So before we get started, what we are going to discuss here today is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. So we'll take a look at our typical, uh, the major equity indices, get a sense for where they currently sit. We've seen a bit of a pullback here over the past couple of days uh, and evaluate where we are within that pullback. We'll take a look at the fixed income markets, the bond markets, and how the commodity markets have reacted to that. Along with our sector rotation model, take a look at the broad 11 sectors, which ones are strengthening, which ones are weakening, before taking a look at some of the subsectors, and then looking at stocks that are either breaking out or breaking down for today. Um, so when we start with the S&P 500, uh, clear Still, long-term trend uh, is very much intact. Short-term, as you can see within this long-term uptrend, we have multiple pullbacks here, and currently we are in the middle of one of these pullbacks. Right now, it's still fairly shallow, but we did get um, we did manage to close below the 21-day moving average for two days in a row. So we are near the pullback range, if you will, for this to continue moving higher. There is risk of a little bit more of a pullback here down to the 435 level. As long as the S&P 500 stays above 435, our long-term bullish trend remains intact. If we dr drop below 435, the support level here, that's when the uh, neutral, slightly uh, bullish view here in the broader markets would end, and we would turn towards a much more bearish view of the broader markets. So right now, we are in a very shallow pullback here. There is risk of a little bit more before this can continue moving higher here at the moment. And if we look at the NASDAQ 100, this also reflects that same. The NASDAQ 100 has not pulled back below the 21 day moving average. Typically we see most of these pullbacks will get below the 21 day moving average. So far we have not we have not seen that so far. So that's what leads us to believe that at least in tech, the NASDAQ 100 could see a little bit more of a bigger pullback before we see a continuation higher for the moment. And when we look at the Russell 2000, this is really where the uh, the Russell starts to look a little stronger than the other equity markets. Uh, the Russell, as you can see, has continued to hold this 221 support level here. The pullback here to this level has held this support level. This uh, puts the Russell 2000 back into the 232, 235 range here to the upside. If we start to turn up from the momentum here to the upside, so far small caps is holding a little better than the S&P and the NASDAQ. 100 at the moment. So this is one that we are paying attention to as we start to see a little bit of rotation from the large cap into small cap here at the moment. And then we look at the equal weight S&P 500 index, uh, broader participation across the board. So market breadth is starting to improve a little bit. Um, but if you look at the, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Index, this major uh, $350 support level has been broken. Uh, this certainly starts to put the Dow into slightly uh, tougher territory, more of a neutral uh, consolidation range rather than the bullish tr uh, trend that we were in if it stayed above 350. Uh, the Dow has failed to stay above 350 here. This is concerning for the broader markets if the Dow cannot get back above these levels. So these are some of the major levels that we're paying attention to here in the broader markets. Largely on balance, things still look fairly strong here. There, we could see a little bit more downside here in the next couple of days uh, before this bullish trend continues. But if things start to uh, break below these major support levels, that's when we would start thinking about a shift in the overall direction. But so far, that has not happened. Now, when we look at the number of stocks that are above its 50-day moving average, it currently sits at 45%. That's a still fairly low participation rate. It is improving, but it's still a very low base here meaning we're not seeing a lot of participation here in the broader markets from the stocks within the indices. You still largely are still are seeing the major mega cap names dragging the markets higher while the rest of the market is really not participating in this broader move. So this is still some of the things that concern us about the, tr uh, about the bullish market that we are in and the health of the bullish market, which is not particularly strong when you don't see 
broad participation here in the in the in the market here. And then when we look at the bond market, this is really where TLT continues to trade within this um, triangle uh, and trading towards the apex of this triangle. Now, because this is a continuation pattern, meaning we've entered this triangle from the downside, our expectation is that this will resolve itself here to the upside, but we have not seen that resolution yet. So our expectation is that for now, this will continue to trade into this triangle until it breaks one way or another. If it breaks out to the upside, then we'll likely see bond yields dip. If we break to the downside, we'll see bond yields rise. And that's going to be a major driver of equity valuations and equity pricing, which is why I think this is one of the most important charts to pay attention to here over the next few weeks to see if bonds break out higher or lower, because that's going to help give us that guidance as to what valuations we can continue to expect from the equity markets. And then when we take a look at the commodity markets, if we look at gold, gold has failed at that 171 resistance level that we spoke about here last week. The failure at that level basically for me confirms that this overall downtrend in gold is still intact. So my, bro my, my thesis is still that gold will likely continue to trend lower because of the large overall trend is still clearly to the downside. We failed to break out higher here. That failure leads me to believe that this continuation will happen. And then when we look at crude, this is really where we have seen crude break out here. Crude has been in a, in a trading into a triangle, but we've started to break out higher here. You can draw the lines multiple ways, uh, but basically what we've seen is we've broken down from the trend line and we've broken out from a resistance level. So this certainly puts crude back into the 72, 74, $76 range here to the upside. And this is going to be supportive for energy shares. This is going to be supportive for oil and gas. And we'll take a look at some of those subsectors here in a minute. Um, so when we look at sector rotation, we do see a fair amount of rotation right now. We have five sectors in improving and leading. We have six sectors in lagging and weakening. And so a fair amount of rotation, we've seen uh, technology move back into the weakening quadrant. We've seen consumer staples move into the improving, and we've seen consumer discretionary move into the leading. Uh, we still have real estate and communications in the leading, but real estate remains strong while communications is starting to weaken a little bit here. And energy really started to turn around here as well as, as we started to see that oil and gas and crude uh, pricing is, uh, rise a little bit over here for the past few trading sessions. We've seen energy also show a little bit of leadership as well. And then you have utilities, healthcare starting to turn up while you were, while industrials, materials, and financials remain into the lagging and, and, and actually continuing to move in the wrong direction here for these sectors. So a fair amount of rotation, a uh, fair amount of movement here, and a fair amount of opportunity, I would say, within the sectors. So when we look at consumer discretionary, consumer discretionary is within spitting distance of its all-time highs. Price action yesterday was also fairly strong here. We have a fairly strong accumulation bar here to the upside. This certainly points us to potentially for a breakout and a continuation higher here for consumer discretionary. You know, you have a few big names here, Amazon, Costco, uh, that are that are moving higher here in this particular space. So that's one to pay attention to here. Utilities. Utilities has seen very little uh, movement here over for quite some time, but recently it broke out from the $68 level here. And after breaking out, it's come back to retest this level multiple times as support. So this certainly puts a, a confirmation that this is likely to at least head back into the $70 range and remain range bound. But if it can break out above 70, that certainly would be fairly constructive here for XLU utilities. So utilities forming this base above 68 uh, is a potential opportunity here to the upside. And then we see a very similar pullback here in healthcare as well. Healthcare recently pulling back to this 132 uh, support level. This is the second time it's testing this level. So this is one that we're watching to see if it holds. If it holds, this will target 137 here back to the upside. That's about $5 
move here to the upside. If, if, if healthcare, which remains fairly strong, can, can stay strong, that's when we can expect that breakout here above 137 and higher. So the pullback here for healthcare is that potential opportunity uh, for this very strong sector here. As you can see, uh, if you look at the long-term chart here, very strong uptrend. Uh, it actually accelerated out of this uh, channel, if you will, accelerated upside to the channels now pulling back to this channel and also a potential continuation higher here so you see quite a few of the sectors moving and, and the non-traditional sectors meaning it's not just technology leading the markets higher here we're seeing quite a bit of movement from all of the sectors and then taking a look at the, some of the subsectors. So we talked about energy being fairly strong here, but specifically oil and gas. If we look at XOP, the oil and gas ETF, as you can see, we've put in this kind of bottoming formation here and now started to break out here above this $85 level. So this is one that we're paying attention to here right now for a continuation higher back towards the $100 level. So within energy, energy is obviously uh, quite a few different types of, of companies. You have uh, drillers, you have oil and gas, you have pipeline, you have refiners. Um, so th this is the specifically oil and gas exploration and product uh, ETF, uh, as you can see, is showing some strength here after completing what looks like a bottoming formation and starting to break out higher here above that $86 level. And then we also have biotech. Biotech has been on a fairly strong trend here over the past few months. As you can see, after bottoming around this 146 area, tr uh, triple bottom uh, that we formed here in biotech, it broke out finally above this 160 uh, dollar level, came back to retest this level multiple times before continuing higher here. So we've been on a fairly strong uptrend here. And what we simply have done is we've pulled back to trend. And this is potentially an opportunity to look for a continuation higher here for IBB. And this is really where the risk to reward ratio favors a long position here because you have fair amount of upside. But if we start to see this break below this trend line or start to trade sideways, uh, you can take your losses pretty quickly with just a few dollars worth of risk and looking for closer to 10 to $12 of upside here uh, if the IBB continues to move higher. And this is putting the risk to reward in your favor by buying the dip in this bullish trend here for IBB. So looking at some of the stocks that are starting to break out or break down, this is really where we start to see some stocks like CRM, you know, one of, uh, one of the strongest stocks fundamentally that have recently broken out higher on earnings has come all the way back to its prior breakout level, which is around 252, 255 or so. Uh, after breaking out and gapping higher, it filled that gap and came all the way back to the break, uh, breakout level here. This is another one where simply the risk to reward favorites here to the upside because you have upside up into the 270, uh, 270 level here to the upside from right, right now that's about $20 here to the upside. But if you start to see CRM dip below into the 248, 245 level here, that's when you want to take uh, cut your losses. So you have a risk to reward well into the two to one risk to reward ratio here when you are patient and wait for this type of dip to look for further upside. So this is one I recommend taking a look at some of the research for, see if you agree with the underlying fundamentals of this company. If you do the technicals, I think favor a risk to reward on the long side. Another one that I think is worth paying attention to, and we're starting to see a lot of travel stocks you know, become a little bit more interesting after struggling over the past few months is Lyft. And Lyft has been holding this $46 level for uh, almost a year now um, after breaking out from this level uh, after the November election. It's come back to hold this level $46 multiple times. And the question is whether or not now is the time for it to start to uh, appreciate, if you will, off these lows. Uh, we've seen multiple times where it's uh, held these lows and it rallied each time it rallies a smaller amount. And the question is whether this is going to uh, fail again and continue to move lower, or this is going to continue moving higher. It's hard to say, but what we have here is some intermediate uh, trend lines here that have been broken here, broken here to the upside, and we've gotten back above the $50 level, which is also an important uh, support and resistance level here. As you can see, 50 has been support and resistance multiple times. 
um, and now we've gotten back above it. So this is really one where, where the risk reward, in my opinion, also favors to the long side because you're looking at closer to uh, you know, 50, 60, $61 or so here to the upside. And if it fails, it's likely going to get back into the $49, $48 level quickly. Uh, meaning if this bearish trend just continues, it's likely to get back into the $47, $48 level here. Cut your losses after a couple of bucks, but your upside here is uh, about twice as much to the upside. So this is a bit more speculative. This is certainly one of the worst performing stocks in the broader markets, but this is one that is looking like it may start to turn around in the early days. And like I said, there's a lot of travel stocks currently in the, on the move here. You have Expedia, you have some of the hotel stocks. The hotel stocks have held up substantially better than the... Um, uh, than the airline stocks. But if you look at Hilton, Hilton has been trading sideways here after breaking out higher from the 115 level back here in early 2021 and has been trading sideways since then. But we've seen a little bit of momentum here over the past couple of weeks uh, or past couple of days, along with some of the strength that we've seen in some of the other travel stocks like Expedia. Um, so this is really one where we're watching for a potential breakout higher here. This has not broken out yet above this 130 level, but we're watching this 130 level because we've seen a long continuation pattern now after what has been a very strong uptrend. It has a period of rest, and now it has the opportunity to move to the upside. It has not broken out yet again, but if we do see that breakout here, this is really one where we can expect to see some pretty big uh, movement here to the upside. So this is one that I think is worth watching, especially out of all of the travel stocks and out of the different hotel stocks, Hilton certainly looks a little stronger than let's say Marriott and some of the other ones that we currently are paying attention to. And lastly, on the bullish side, one stock that we really have not heard much from for a while now and has been underperforming the broader markets, underperforming the semiconductor space is Intel. Intel has struggled substantially here over the past year after having what was a strong move here at the end of last year, the beginning of this year, completely fell apart after that. But perhaps starting to show a little bit of strength and showing a little bit of a bottoming formation here. You can draw this um, formation multiple ways. You could draw that as an inverted head and shoulders. Um, but largely what we're starting to see is negative divergence from momentum. As the price makes lower lows, momentum is no longer making lower lows and actually making higher lows. And you have the breakout here above this $54 uh, resistance level that it has been uh, trading below for quite a f for a couple of months or so, and then we've now seen the first instance of Intel starting to break out higher here. So this could be the early days of what could be a larger move here in Intel. Again, the risk to reward ratio favors the long side here because if it fa quickly fails back into the fifty three dollar level, that would be a false break. Cut your losses. Um, but if you start to see some momentum here to the upside, uh, you could see this accelerate into the $58.5, $59 level and potentially all the way back to the gap fill level here, which is around 62 or so to the upside. So again, risk to reward ratio to the upside on Intel, which is something that we haven't looked at in a while, certainly favors uh, to the upside. And then looking at some of the stocks that are breaking down. So unfortunately, you know, big mover that a lot of investors have been paying attention to recently has been Pfizer. Pfizer has had that big, big move, um, probably on the back of, con you know, concerns of the Delta virus and the need for booster shots and, and things like that. But unfortunately, after holding this $46 level a, a couple of times as support, uh, after that initial parabolic move, it has now broken below that level. And unfortunately, I cannot help but think Pfizer is headed back towards the $41, $42 um, uh, breakout level here to the upside. So this is less so, I would say, of a short and more so of a, if you're long the stock, perhaps it's time to start taking some profits if you have not already done so. Um, on this move because I do think that perhaps this move is coming to, to an end. You see the same risk here of AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca, um, as you can see, has, has held this level multiple times after trading in kind of in a bit, bit of a range bound mode. It did try to break out higher here, but quickly failed. And now it's trading back 
towards the support level. And it looks like it's actually starting to break below the support level. And this is one also to watch for potential uh, downside here for AstraZeneca after what has been a month long uh, topping formation above this $56 level, right? However you wanna draw this topping formation, the question is whether this topping formation is complete and it's heading back into the $51 level here or so. It very well could bounce off this level and maintain more of a sideways motion. But from my perspective, that still doesn't change the overall uh, topping formation. You just may delay that topping formation for a little bit before it breaks down and you might be able to get a better entry up here into the $58 level here or so for a short. But that doesn't change the overall trend if it does bounce back into and, and fill that particular gap. I, I think that perhaps you might just be able to get a slightly better entry on a potential short here. So that's one that I also think is worth paying attention to as this kind of hype around uh, you know, vaccines and, and, and our needs for continual vaccines in the long run is starting to, to die down a little bit, at least from these pharmaceutical uh, companies pricing. And then when we look at some of the retailers, this is one that I, I've been work, uh, focusing on for quite some time and watching for quite some time is Target. Target has had a very, very strong run here as a retailer, certainly greatly outpacing Target, uh, a great greatly outpacing everything from Walmart to Amazon. Uh, but we've started to see this trend break. Um, we saw the trend break a couple of weeks ago. It came back to retest this level as resistance and then held, uh, you know, it, it initially pulled back to the 245 level here or so, bounced, uh, broke below 245, bounced a little bit and broke below 245 again. And I think this is finally, you know, the straw that could potentially break the camel's back for Target target to head back lower here into at least the 228 level here to the downside um, as target you know has obviously done very well during the pandemic uh, their their growth strategy from a digital perspective has greatly outpaced Walmart and Costco and some of the even Amazon names. So this is one that has done very well, but as you can see, the trends are starting to show that slowdown. Um, and uh, it, this is at risk, in my opinion, of a further pullback here in the broader markets. So with that, that covers what I wanted to share with you here today. I hope that this was helpful in giving you a better understanding as to what is currently moving in the markets and what our views are from a macro perspective. With that, thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a great trading day.